Hey Curly Tees! Today let's make a lemongrass lotion with lemon balm and sunflower oil which in my opinion is actually one of the best oils to use for dry skin. Some girls use a lubricating cream or lotion to prevent skin roughness or chapping. Start with distilled water. Always use distilled or deionized water to make skincare and hair care products. I found that smaller water bottles are more durable over time than these big jugs. I don't know why, maybe it's the quality of the plastic, but the small water bottles also fit better on screen when you're recording a video. As you know, propendiol is one of my favorite humectant moisturizers to use. You may remember me raving about Nature Silk years ago. Well, this is it. It's this. This is Nature Silk. Propendiol is in so many products now because it's liquid, it's easy to use, it doesn't significantly alter the pH of your product, and it's not harsh on the skin. It's an EcoCert and NPA approved alternative to propylene and butylene glycol if you need one. I remember it being much cheaper years ago than it is today though, so. Betaine or beet sugar extract is a humectant that leaves a moist, supple feel on the skin. It's great to have, but you can skip it if you don't necessarily have it with you in stock. I'm using an FD&C color dissolved in glycerin to color this mix. Sometimes water-based color added during the cool down phase won't fully dissolve if used with certain ingredients like polyquaternium 37. So to make sure that you don't have to deal with that, add the color directly into the water phase. Get it to your desired tint while remembering that the final lotion will look a little lighter in color than what you're seeing. is important. Skin differs in thickness and texture on various parts of the body. Emosun is a sunflower oil-based emulsifier that can be used in a one-pot process. Every available development of science and engineering has been utilized. That means you can mix the waters and the oils in the same vessel before heating. The emulsifier is non-ionic and in powder form for better handling. The inky for the emulsifier is on screen now. Pause, take a look at it. Now, I bought this from a company that doesn't seem to supply ingredients to small manufacturers or DIYers anymore. I mean, it's a great emulsifier because it just works you know like btms just works it just works but unlike btms emosun is non-ionic so you can use it for a wide variety of purposes including making lotions creams facial milks conditioners leave-ins etc but with this emulsifier you can actually improve the stability of your emulsion by using xanthan gum
ICE, ice, sunflower, is optional in this recipe. Let's see if we can explain it. I'm using it at 1% to help support the main emulsifier. And you might also think that all this doesn't matter. Well, that's where you'd be wrong. Now, don't get me wrong. Emulsan works as a sole emulsifier, but because I'm adding almost 8% of the entire formula during the cool down phase, I'm going to add a little ice sunflower as sort of a backstop to help prevent any major viscosity decreases or emulsion instability. You've got options here, you guys. If you're not satisfied with 1%, try 2% and adjust the formula accordingly. You can also try ice silicone instead of ice sunflower. Or you can skip this all together, do a separate heating for the water and the oils, and add a xanthan gum slash glycerin slurry to the water phase. You can also try 1-2% to of another non-thickening emulsifier like Umogen or Supermerge Pro to help. You can turn this recipe from a lotion into a cream by increasing the amount of ice sunflower or ice silicone to 3%. The point is, since this particular emulsifier is non-ionic, you have room to experiment with your formulation. All right, now used here at 3%, sunflower oil is a great oil for dry skin. Some people assume it's like a filler oil, but high oleic sunflower oil absorbs and helps protect my skin without being overly slick, oily, or greasy. You can also use argan oil, shea oil, or walnut oil, but it may feel slightly different on the skin. You just will have to experiment. At this point, you should mostly be slowly mixing the lotion. High shear will affect the viscosity, okay? Lemon balm is an antioxidant said to help soothe irritated skin. This is a glycerite made from lemon balm herb. The theme is lemon-based lotion, right? So I chose to use 0.2% of lemon balm extract to play into the theme of the formula. Now, I wouldn't suggest substituting something like lemon essential oil because the essential oil could be irritating to some people's skin. But if you don't have lemon balm, you can skip this or use another soothing herb. Lemongrass essential oil is said to help reduce redness and has antibacterial and antioxidant properties. Lemongrass has a distinctive scent, so make sure you like it before deciding to use it because the scent doesn't immediately disappear. I'm good at 0.1%. Isoamylorate is a silky ester used to enhance the feel of a product. At 2.5% here, it's optional in this formula, but highly, highly recommended, especially, especially if you're going to skip the silicone that's coming up later in this video. Isoamylorate can be considered as sort of replacement for silicone, actually. If you don't like cones, you can use this instead. As you know, my opinion on cones has changed dramatically in the last maybe five or six years. I now use them regularly in hair care and skin care because of the benefits they provide by helping to protect the skin, to lock in moisture, to protect the hair cuticles, to reduce the amount of frizz, etc., etc. Glycerin 26 is a humectant created to extend the length of time your skin feels moisturized. It's meant to reduce water loss from the skin and to improve the texture of whatever you add it to. Like propendiol, it can be a replacement for propylene glycol, butylene glycol, and even glycerin. The 2% is a nice amount here. The 1.5% cyclomethicone is optional, but serves to keep the viscosity where I want it to be for this lotion formula. Ah, uh, yes, I can see it all now. It helps hasten absorption on the skin and further improves spreadability. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe on YouTube. It is non-greasy, of course, and helps improve the feel of the skin after it dries down. Leave a comment if you have questions. Now, if you prefer not to use it, you can do that. Increase the amount of isoamylorate or propendiol and you should be fine. Okay, let me explain this. 
Sometimes when you see multiple ingredients used for the same purpose, what I'm trying to do is create a cascading effect whereby the combination of ingredients provide a nice supple feeling to the skin or hair. Like for example, the volatile cyclomethicone decreases the length of time the lotion just sits on top of the skin while the isoamylurate extends that silkiness and helps keep the skin from drying out. Now the glycerith 26 provides extended moisture retention while the propendiol enhances the penetration of the other ingredients into the skin. Now you can decide which combo of any of these ingredients work best for you, but don't be put off by those who may say that certain ingredients aren't necessary people feel how they feel, but sometimes a combination of ingredients from the same category are included in formulas sort of because they serve multiple purposes aside from the main purpose. And one ingredient may actually kick in after another ingredient has fulfilled its purpose. Phenylpropanol is used at 0.5% here. It's a broad spectrum preservative mixed with ethyl hexoglycerin. But use whichever preservative that works best for you. I'm not gonna argue with you about preservatives, okay? Just note that vitamin E, grapefruit extract, and rosemary ROE are not preservatives. 1% fragrance is optional, but recommended to fit with the sort of lemon theme. Pick a nice lemon-based scent. I'm using lemon sugar cookie. So, you know, you can try a sugary lemon, a, lemon mint or like even a watermelon lemon based scent. Make sure you use a body safe fragrance and please pay attention to the maximum usage rate. Try not to use anywhere near that max though. We see that skin is made up of various layers. Individual cells of the outer layer are constantly drying out and dropping off to be replaced by the growing cells of the layers below. Okay, side note, this North Pole fragrance from the Flaming Candle is so good. Listen, <laughs> listen, if you like mint, but you prefer a sweet mint, almost like those like puffy mint candies, get this one. Okay, now here are the things to check for before proceeding. Is the viscosity where you want it? If it's too thick, add 0.5% or so of pentylene glycol or add some more cyclomethicone. Just try not to add any more water because that's going to affect your preservation system. Next, is there any separation? If there's separation, make sure your pH is within a range suitable for the emulsifier. Make sure there's no conflict between the charge of your ingredients. For example, like make sure you haven't added a cationic ingredient that's clashing with any of the other substitutions or additions you may have made to the formula. Transfer your lotion to your chosen container. I'm using a silicone travel friendly bottle that holds about 100 grams the size of this formula. Since this is a liquid lotion, use a bottle with a squirt top instead of a jar for better handling. Enjoy your lemony lemongrass lotion. If you are looking for a heavier cream for the skin, check out the link that will appear on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. Thanks for watching this video and remember you can get more recipes and formulas like this including the full ingredients list, instructions, my notes, and other information at curlytea.com. Follow on social media or become a patron at Patreon. By the way, shout out to the wonderful patrons. Thank you guys so much for your dedication and support. Website members, y'all already know. Y'all already know that none of this is possible without y'all. So I talk to all of you guys soon.